the biggest mistake that people make is they try to do it all at once, right? So, so figure out what your message is, tell your story. Listen, sales and marketing hasn't changed in the last 200 years. People still like to do business with people they like. Nobody wants to be sold anything. They wanna buy something from you. They want you to consult with them. So all of that has been the same since people have been traveling salesmen on, on, pl on trains forever. The only thing that has changed are the tactics that we use. This interview is brought to you by newhomes.net. Newhomes.net is the fastest new home shopping experience anywhere. Optimized for mobile and free for builders and consumers. Clicks go to your website. Emails and calls go directly to your sales team. Get your new homes and communities in front of potential buyers today. Newhomes.net. Quint Lears at the 2019 International Builder Show with New Home Sales. .com. Mitch Levinson, the legend. We, okay, the National Sales and Marketing Council. You will be the new chair starting in 2019. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, chair starting right now. Mm -hmm. I've, been trying to, I've been trying to meet up with you at Sales Central. We've been running around the show, but I finally you can hey, you can run from newhomesales.com, but you can't hide. I'm going to chase you down. I'm going to find you. I found you here, I, and I appreciate your time because I know you got customers and people that are wanting to talk to you. What, what has the National Sales and Marketing Council uh, meant to you, the home building industry? How is it just being a part of that, uh, growing, learning, contributing, connecting? Talk about it. Yeah, well, the National Sales and Marketing Council is really great. It's been uh, very helpful for my career. Um, you know, I participate in NSMC, and I'm chair because I like to give back to the industry. And really, it's been a great industry. It's been good to me. Uh, you know, I started way back in the day uh, in 1992. Uh, and actually started with the uh, National Association of Home Builders in the late 90s and have been a member uh, ever since. I've uh, been heavily involved probably the last 10 years because really it's a great way to learn uh, from the best people in the industry across the country and to hear what's going on and to bring all that back home. And really the great thing about not only the National Sales and Marketing Council, but Sales Central and the International Builder Show and having a booth and speaking engagements and all the activities that happened all week long. The best part about that is I can take some of that with me back home and use it in my market for my business right away. And if I'm a builder, even better. So, you know, one thing, get involved, stay connected. One thing I was going to uh, tell you a lot of people don't know is that you're an advisor, you're part of the advisory board for the Sales and Marketing Ideas magazine. Mm -hmm. what, what, you know, what I want to encourage people is like, go up and say, look, I want to contribute, like how can I, and uh, obviously you're a thought leader, they wouldn't let anybody just do that, but the fact that you're there, you're, you're influencing on a national level. So, sales, marketing, let's get down to business. So, what, what, is, um, what is your background? And, and, and let's get some content here. We're trying to, we're trying to uh, equip the frontline new home sales and marketing professionals. Let's roll. Yeah, so you know, I don't know uh, what you want to know about my background, but you know, I was a, you know, one of the first people in, in the country actually to have an e-commerce or internet degree. While at the same time, I started my career in 1991 selling houses from a trailer in Chicago with snow on the ground, uh, selling plants from a piece of paper. So very few marketers out there in our industry really have that kind of sales background, new home sales background. Um, and that's not hard to do. I mean, it's not easy to do. I mean, if any of you new home sales people out there are sitting there thinking, man, they got models today. Models. We didn't have models back then. I had a piece of paper and a trailer that was in a file cabinet, you know, back in the day. Uh, Did so you have to walk to school in snow? I'm just messing no, with no, you. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm a milestone birthday this year. So it was like He's that. doing very I well. I did walk to school in the snow, but it was not uphill both ways. And I had shoes. Uphill both ways with a horse. Okay. Exactly. Listen, um, let's get some marketing tips, okay? What's the biggest mistake you see today 
that market? What's the thing that makes you cringe? So right now I think people are overwhelmed so much with all of the different tactics that they can choose. The biggest mistake that people make is they try to do it all at once, right? So, so figure out what your message is, tell your story. Listen, sales and marketing hasn't changed in the last 200 years. People still like to do business with people they like. People still, nobody wants to be sold anything. They want to buy something from you. They want you to consult with them. So all of that has been the same since people have been traveling salesmen on, on, on trains forever, right? So none of that has changed. The only thing that has changed are the tactics that we use. So figure out what you want to do, figure out what your message is, find and understand where your target market is, and then attack that slowly, consistently, one at a time. So does that mean you know you need a website and you not need to start blogging, you need to tell the story the right way? But now, should I do Facebook? Should I do Instagram? Should I send email marketing programs? What should I do next? Tackle what you can and don't bite off too much because I see a lot of builders out there, they say, oh my God, I gotta do everything all at once. And that's your biggest mistake. Do what you're doing well, right? That's why you're an effective home builder because you don't build too many houses, right? So. Do it right the first time. Don't bite off more than you can chew. That's probably the biggest mistake I see people making. I love that. And, um, you know, you're, one of my favorite quotes on the Internet is, uh, it was nothing has changed in 200 years. It was I think it was Abraham Lincoln who says, don't believe everything you read on the Internet. Right, right. Yeah, I know. He had it. Right. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. My no, son is, I'm just kidding. Around. birthday, February 12th. Was it? Yeah, my youngest son shares Abraham Lincoln's birthday. But what you're talking about is not the vehicle, but you're talking about the destination is the same. Well, in order to sell anything, in order to do a good job marketing, you have to have a story, right? You have to have a unique selling proposition, right? That's not something new, right? It's the four P's of marketing. Everybody learned it in school way back when they were in. Let's so, do them, the four P's. People. Pers product. product, placement, promotion. Yeah. Passion. Yeah, that's what, well, if you don't have passion, you're in the wrong business, right? So I don't really, you know, I don't get up and have a job every day. I get up and do what I love. And that's what's important. What's really neat, I guess, is marketing relevance. Um, I hear a lot of people like, you know, as long as I'm still relevant, as long, so how do people stay relevant? And I'm going to, Carolyn, we're going to hit you in, okay? So thanks for, for joining us as well. This is Carolyn Brick with Marketing Relevance. How do people stay relevant? By knowing how to tell their story and telling it well. So what, reverting back to what Mitch said, as long as you tell your story, you're passionate about your story, your brand, you target the people that are meant for your story, then that's how you stay relevant. You'll be relevant always if you know how to do that. Now, let, let, me ch let me challenge you a little bit here because there's two people. It's like, you know, friendship selling and community things. Then we're using words like attack and target, right? Um, so what, what's the balance? I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there because I, I hear different terms. It makes me think of different things like, you know, attack and target means like I'm attacking. So how do you keep, what's the balance there? Just talk about it. Yeah, so, I mean, you know what you're good at, right? And you know what you want to be good at. You, you know what your voice is, right? So we are a very friendly, laid-back marketing agency, right? I'm not wearing a tie. I don't have a three-piece suit. I, I went and I spoke, and you spoke in a tie today, probably, right? I'm wearing a golf shirt and a jacket, right? It's a different voice. So I am very comfortable with what my voice is. I go out and get it. That's you're what not attacking the, the customer, you're attacking what? Mediocrity? Are you attacking I laziness? Staying, I am staying relevant because I'm being consistent and repetitive and doing the same thing that works over and over again. So I am attacking it because, listen, who doesn't want more business? Who doesn't want to be more profitable? Who doesn't want to be effective at what they do? So you, it, you can't wait for it to come to you. You have to go and get it. And that's not for marketing, and that's, that's for every part of life, right? The best at what they do, think of an athlete. Right? Think of Michael Jordan, think of you know, Peyton Manning, think of Tom Brady, right? Think of the best athletes at their skill. Do they have coaches? Do they sit back and, and rest on what they, no. They attack themselves every day to get better. That's why you have to attack. That's why you have to have the passion. It has to come from within. See, I don't like the I don't like the terminology like buyers or liars. You know, I think it's like, wait a second, no, the buyers are the ones that, you know, are, are the, you know, we're here to serve them, right? right. Um, okay, okay. So you, you've had a lot of different things. I, I usually ask people, like, what's the biggest mistake you see? I'm going to ask you, because you've been the highs and the lows, what's the biggest mistake that you've made in your career 
Let you just you think back now and you cringe. And it's either of you. What's the biggest? I love you know we love seeing. You know what people love more than success is failure. They want to like, what did you do wrong? What's the biggest thing that you've done where you're you're you regret or don't yeah. like? Well, so I don't know if I would say regret as much, but uh, you know the the biggest challenge that we have to overcome on a regular basis is you know the customer is always right, and we have a lot of customers that you know you know we deal with sales and marketing people and professionals in the industry, and and sometimes we deal directly with the builders and their small companies and they don't know marketing, they know building. And they know what they like, but they don't know what they want. And they think they do. So, you know, when we deliver our message, sometimes it doesn't really make sense to them because we're thinking from the customer perspective. And they, they really don't see that. They want to give information to the buyers. They don't want the buyers to find it. Right? And buyers are not really liars. They just may not know what they want. So the biggest mistake that I make on a regular basis is, Listen, I have a Chicago Midwestern personality. I am absolutely direct. So I'm going to tell you how it is. And if you and I disagree, well, I'm still going to tell you how it is. So the biggest mistake that I make is, listen, I know what I'm doing with marketing. And if we have a difference of opinion, we can certainly A-B test. But, you know, I know it works. I know it works. So you hired me because you trusted me. So, again, my biggest mistake is when people don't want to do what I want, I push pretty hard. That might... So, um, uh, it, uh, what I was going to say is, you, you, you triggered something in my thought. It, it was Henry Ford, right? He says, if I asked the customer what they, would, what they want, they would say, a faster horse, mm -hmm. right? What, what's the biggest success that you've had? What's something that where you said right now, this is like, we're winning because of this? We're winning because... He has been educating home builders and how to market their business for over 19 years um, successfully. He is invited to speak on behalf of the entire industry as to how to get their message across. And how proud can you possibly be of that? The American dream is to own a home. So who wouldn't want to be part of that message? Let me ask you maybe a silly question. Marketing, advertising, Sales. What's the difference? What you know? Because it all kind of blends together. There's people that are salespeople think they're marketers. I'm an advertiser. What's the difference? And what do you? What suggestion would you have about that? Well, so you know, I think they're all tied together, and they're all very different. Um, Branches of the same tree. Are they different specialties? Steps on a ladder. Yeah, steps on a ladder. They're all part of the process. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, the real important thing is conversion. It's sales, right? So if nothing sells, nothing happens. You know, everything starts with the sale. Uh, and, you know, high quality traffic, which turns into high conversion metrics, brings sales. So if you're building the right funnel the right way, that's marketing, right? And effective marketing means how do I generate high conversion rates? So, for instance, our websites, right? Our websites generate 2 to 5% conversion, right? 2 to 5% conversion is, is huge. Industry average is about one half to 1%. So our websites produce six times what the industry averages. That's effective marketing, right? Because we get the traffic that wants to buy homes or we get the traffic that wants to use your product, right? So getting that to convert, that's, that's how you're effective. So now you're being the national chairman for the Sales and Marketing Council. It's a position of, of influence and power. What are you going to do? What, what direction do you want to take? What do you want to do uh, to make an impact in the industry? Yeah, so I don't know how much power that I'll have doing that, but uh, it'll be a lot of fun. One of the things that uh, that makes the National Sales and Marketing Council great is it's really a grassroots type of effort. Uh, we have a lot of local homebuilders associations with local SMCs, and we really support them. So the National Sales and Marketing Council, their constituents, their clients, are those local SMCs. So uh, I feel like we haven't done a good enough job through the years communicating effectively with them what the benefits are and, and that we're here to help and, and all we have to offer. So what I want to do over the next year is put together infrastructure in place internally so that we talk to all of the local SMCs on a regular basis, once or twice or three times a year. I want to make sure that we can get local uh, SMC members involved in what we do uh, here at the national level, at the state level, and at their local level. So I want to build that kind of infrastructure. We already have some skeleton in place for it. Uh, but again, what I want to make sure is if someone at a local SMC has a question about marketing, I they need to know where to go. And they need to know that we're a resource for them. Uh, and that's what we need to do. So if you're in the, the Home Building Association, uh, SMC member, let's support Mitch this next year in his mission. And um, uh, how do we connect with you? Any last words? 
the mic is yours. Yeah. Well, uh, my cell phone number is pretty out there. So uh, anyone that has it, uh, go ahead and, and use it. Uh, it's on my business card. Uh, email is mitch at marketingrelevance.com. Pretty easy. Spell it just how it sounds. And, uh, or visit our website, marketingrelevance.com. Thanks for being on the program, Caroline. The show's been good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, the show has been great. Still standing. Yeah, that you standing. boss mode. Peter crying a little bit, but we're all good. Here at the <laughs> International Builder Show 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Is it crazy that it was snowing? It is yeah. snowing. I could put breakfast this morning and it was snow's coming down. Check out marketingrelevance.com. Proud to have you on the program. Keep making an impact. Appreciate it.